Hi students, welcome to session 2 of respiration in organisms. In the previous sessions we studied about respiratory system, introduction to respiratory system and respiratory system in animals. Now we will study about respiratory system in humans. So normally we take in air through our nostrils and when we inhale air it passes through our nostrils into the nasal cavity. Right students? Yes. So from the nasal cavity the air reaches our lungs through the windpipe and lungs are present in the chest cavity and this cavity is surrounded by the ribs on the sides. Right? So breathing involves the movement of these organs. During inhalation, ribs move to and outward and diaphragm moves down. And this movement increases space in our chest cavity and air rushes into our lungs. So it is all about the organs which are present in us. That actually carries out this process of respiration. So our lungs are present in our chest and they are so large that they take up most of the space in there. We basically have two lungs but they aren't of the same size the way our eyes or our nostrils are. Instead the lung on the left side of our body is a bit smaller than the lung on the right. So this extra space on the left leaves the room for our heart, leaves the space for our heart. Our lungs are protected by our rib cage, which is made up of 12 sets of ribs. And these ribs are connected to our spine in our back and go around our lungs to keep them safe. And beneath the lungs is the diaphragm a dome-shaped muscle that works with our lungs to allow us to inhale and exhale means to breathe in and breathe out air. We can't see our lungs but it's easy to feel them in action whenever we put our hands on our chest and we breathe in very deeply we can feel our chest getting slightly bigger and when we breathe out the air, we feel that our chest return to its regular size. So we have just felt the power of our lungs. But basically, when we see its function, our lungs are important for breathing and also for talking. Above the trachea, the windpipe is the larynx which is sometimes called the voice box. So now, let us study about the respiratory system in humans. Let us not just learn it orally, but let us understand it with the help of the picture of the human respiratory system. Yes, respiratory system in humans. Students, humans like other land animals with backbones breathe in oxygen rich in rich air and breathe out carbon dioxide rich air with the help of lungs so lungs are present inside our chest also called the thorax so lungs are protected by the rib cage that forms a sort of fence around them and the ribs also support the respiratory system in human beings. So, let us see this beautiful diagram, this beautiful picture of human respiratory system and learn about it. Yes, this is nose. We all know that this is nose. Then this is trachea. After that come the lungs. So these are lungs. Our two lungs. One is on the right hand side and one on the left hand side. 
and here you can see some extension which is called as diaphragm right so this is the human respiratory system now students as we discussed that our lungs are important for breathing and also for talking now above the trachea or this trachea is also termed as windpipe through which the air passes that is why we call it as windpipe so this trachea or windpipe above this is the larynx which is sometimes called the voice box now across the voice box are two tiny ridges called vocal cords which open and close to make sounds here and when we exhale air from the lungs it comes through the trachea and larynx and reaches the vocal cords so if the vocal cords are closed and the air flows between them the vocal cords vibrate and sound is made so the amount of air we blow out from our lungs determines how loud a sound will be and how long we can make the sound you can even try inhaling very deeply and saying the names of all your friends in your class how far can you get without taking the next breath the take the next time you're outside try shouting and see what happens because shouting and screaming requires lots of air so you will need to breathe in more frequently than you would if you were only saying the words so you can experiment with different sounds and the air it takes to make them when you giggle you let out your breath in short bits but when you burp you let swallowed air in your stomach out in one long one when you hike up it it's because the diaphragm moves in a funny way that causes you to breathe in air suddenly and that air hits your vocal cords when you are not ready so basically our lungs are amazing why they are amazing yes they allow us to breathe they allow us to talk shout at a game sing laugh cry and more and speaking of a game our lungs even work with our brain to help us inhale and exhale a larger amount of air at a more rapid rate when we are running a mile all without even thinking about it once so keeping our lungs looking and feeling healthy is a smart idea and best way to keep our lungs pink and healthy is avoid is to avoid smoking smoking isn't good for any part of our body and our lungs especially hate it cigarette smoke damages the cilia in the trachea so that they can no longer move to keep dirt and other substances out of our lungs even our alveoli get hurt too because the chemicals in the cigarette smoke can cause the walls of the delicate alveoli to break down making it much harder to breathe so to breathe so finally cigarette smoke can damage the cells of the lungs so much that the healthy cells go away only to be replaced by the cancer cells so lungs are normally tough and strong but when it comes to cigarettes they can hurt easily and it's often very difficult or impossible to make them better so if we need to work with chemicals in the shop class be sure to wear a protective mask to keep chemical fumes from entering our lungs now we should also keep one more thing in mind that to keep our lungs healthy we need to exercise our lungs exercise is good for every part of our body we know that and especially for our lungs and heart so when we take part in vigorous exercise like biking running swimming our lungs require more air to give our cells the extra oxygen they need and as we breathe more 
steeply and take in more air, our lungs become more stronger and better at supplying our body with the air it needs to succeed. So we should keep our lungs healthy. Right? So we saw the human respiratory system in which lungs play very important role. Here is one more thing about inhalation and exhalation. We have already studied about these processes. Inhalation means taking in air. So just observe, just notice. This is the diaphragm. Right? So here you can see some difference in the process of inhalation and exhalation. What happens to, to the diaphragm? Yes. When the air comes in, when we inhale, the air comes into our lungs. And here we can see that the position or we can see that the diaphragm shape changes because it expands and contracts. Right? So when we inhale, what happens? Yes, yes, our diaphragm contracts and flattens out and this allows it to move down so our lungs can make space to grow larger as they fill up with air. Moreover, when we release out or expel out the air, the air lungs, the air from the lungs releases out. It goes out. So this is the process of exhalation. So what happens during this time? Yes, the diaphragm expands. So this is the main difference between these processes. During inhalation, diaphragm contracts and during exhalation, diaphragm expands. Here you can see the difference. Right? So basically the ribs support the lungs and they help to pump air in and out when we breathe. So just beneath the lungs is a dome shaped muscle called the diaphragm. So when the diaphragm contracts oxygen rich air is pulled into the lungs and when the diaphragm relaxes or expands, carbon dioxide rich air is pumped out of the lungs. Remember this. So remember students that our lungs are present in the chest cavity and this cavity is surrounded by ribs on the sides. And there are large muscular sheet called diaphragm which forms the floor of the chest cavity. So during inhalation, ribs move to and outward and diaphragm moves down. And this movement increases space in our chest cavity and the air rushes into the lungs. The lungs get filled with air. While during exhalation, ribs move down and inwards. While diaphragm move, moves up to its former position. So this reduces the size of the chest cavity and the air is pushed out of the lungs. So these movements in our body can be felt easily. Whenever we take a deep breath, we can keep our palm on the abdomen and we can feel the movement of abdomen. So we can find that during breathing there are changes in the size of the chest cavity. Right? But do remember that smoking damages the lungs. Smoking is injurious to health. It is also linked to cancer. So it must be avoided. The air around us has various types of unwanted particles such as smoke, dust, pollens, etc. So whenever we inhale, the particles get trapped in the hair present in our nasal cavity. However, sometimes these particles 
may get past the air in the nasal cavity but then they irritate the linings of the lining of the cavity as a result of which we sneeze because sneezing expels these foreign particles from the inhaled air and the dust free clean air enters our body so take care whenever you sneeze you should cover your nose so that the foreign particles you expel are not inhaled by other persons otherwise many communicable dis communicable diseases will take place right so that was all about the respiratory system in humans